Welcome back to Interns Insights. I decided to name it at uh, this because um, I felt like it. We needed a name. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> let us know in the comments down below if you think of a better one. Um, yeah. Also, let the record <laughs> show that we recorded this and that like we talked to ourselves for a half hour <laughs> and realized it wasn't recording. <laughs> So this is our second go around, yeah. everyone. So don't mind if we're feeling a little silly. <laughs> <laughs> That's just gonna be the theme of today's episode. Um, great. So I know. Okay, before we were talking about how crazy this episode was. Um, this is episode three, mind you, and we already have a rock draw. Like, honestly, pretty crazy. I know that's insane, and <clears throat> to me, it's hard determining whether it's best to go to rocks early in the game or best to go to rocks later in the game because early in the game you know there's a lot of people your odds of going home are obviously the best at that or the, your odds of staying are the best at that point early in the game but at the same time later in the game obviously like you've made it so far you don't want to go home on a rocks right so it's just all, overall, though, a tough scene watching Crouch go home. Yeah. I, it's just, Rock Draw is a separate kind of heartbreak, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it's the the not knowing what could have been done kind of thing. Because it, it's literally just tempting fate, as the episode title um, said. Uh, it's like, I don't know, you think that it's not going to be you. You're like, oh, you know, there's there's so many people... I, it's not it's not gonna be me and then yeah it is it was indeed crouch the <laughs> one person that like did not want to go to rocks like yeah he's probably the most adamant about it mm -hmm. and yeah like we'll just never know how he would have played that game and how far he would have went right. my bet would be that he would have went really far i know so it's definitely a shame yeah and that's why it hurts even more like I don't know. It it just sucks to see him go home so so early, but it also sucks because you see how loyal he was to his tribe in the end, and then that's the kind of result he gets for sticking to his tribe. Mm -hmm. So that almost makes me even more curious to see All Stars if he ends up coming on All Stars and like what's going to happen with that? Is he going to have this kind of grudge against Rocks and maybe not be as loyal like I don't know I'm just I want to see him so bad on Survivor that like I can't yeah. imagine him not being on All-Stars I feel like personally if I were to go out on ro Rocks the first go around and then to come back I would never want to see Rocks no ever again. I Absolutely would not even not. get close I would be a flip-flopper for yeah, sure I would switch so fast <laughs> so yeah I'm definitely curious to see um how that results for Crouch in the future but yeah, I definitely think this tribal was very, very dramatic, and mm -hmm. I think it was crazy for all of this to be happening so early in the season. It makes me very excited to see what else we have in store. Um, all of the characters this season are, I don't know, interesting. We've got a dynamic cast and lots of rootable people, lots of people setting themselves up for, I don't know, villainy-type arcs, mm -hmm. so I'm curious to see kind of how it results. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, let, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, <laughs> we have to end. <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> Just cut this part out. I literally have to respond to someone. <laughs> so, I can even see like, Happening, but I just saw like <laughs> you just completely stopped talking. <laughs> I'm too scared to stop the recording, so sorry, Sarah, or Jack, or Sam, who's editing this. <laughs> it's actually no editing. <laughs> it's just me responding. Uh. <laughs> Eek. All right. Apparently, I was supposed to have a meeting at 12. I thought it was at 1. Wait, do you have to stop? No, wait. I'm just telling them I got locked out and I don't want to have this meeting. Even though I technically could have the meeting. <laughs> uh... 
Okay, I'm just gonna let them sort itself out and I'm ghosting them for like half an hour. <laughs> Cause like, I just can't right now. Okay. I don't know, I'm gonna say like a one, two, three and then we can go back. Dude, I literally work tonight, I can't do that. Okay. Okay. Well, wait, where, okay, so what were we talking about before we restart? I feel like we can like just go, hop <laughs> Okay, right. we're yeah. gonna hop, okay. One. <laughs> Um, wait, just for context, my life is kind of, like, falling apart. <laughs> so, that's why, like, anyway. Okay. One, two, three. All right. So, I think we can go ahead and get started yeah. on power rankings now. Um, where do you want to start? We could start, perhaps, let's go to Feedy. To Feedy. Uh, to Feedy, one of the tribes that went to tribal council this week. To Feedy, to me, is overall just really interesting because they seemed super tight-knit right off the beginning, like, right away. Mm -hmm. And then the week leading up to this tribal, they seemed to be spreading out a little bit, getting a little nervous of each other. Mm -hmm. It kind of made me worried that someone would flip. And then right at the end, you know, they stuck strong. So... I'm a little confused on their overall tribe dynamic, like, mm-hmm. how far they're willing to stay strong. Right. But they did it, and they mm-hmm. came out of, alive out of rocks. Yeah. Honestly, I'm, yeah, I'm really confused on how they were all able to stay together, because there's such divides, like, mm-hmm. in this tribe as compared to Sabu Sabu, but, I mean, I guess it worked out for them, so we'll see. But, um, in my number one position, I have Brady. As do I. Brady is, he, he's just got it going on, and he's, he's completely within the cross-tribe alliances, I feel like everyone within his own tribe trusts him, and overall, I feel like he's keeping a low profile himself, he's Mm -hmm. not necessarily making it a big deal that he's got all of these connections, and no one seems necessarily really sus of it, but he's doing everything right in my opinion yeah i agree i think brady's playing a great game thus far he has all his cross tribal alliances he's got almost a number one on a different tribe with ben which is crazy Mm -hmm. um to be so close to someone that's not even on your tribe this early in the game i think is remarkable so props to him he also found the idol this episode so yeah he's got a lot of power in his hands i think it does it, I think it was a bad move though for him to tell Ben about the idol. Yeah. That was a, a really bad play. I agree. <laughs> Just because I don't know, with Ben knowing this early, you never know what he may do or ex- I mean, Ben, you know, is a thousand steps ahead of everyone. He may just be like exposing Brady to other people if he needs to um in the future. Although I think they're really close right now. Yeah. We just don't know what things will switch with tribe swaps and merge and whatnot like there are so many things that can change that I think it's really risky to reveal that you have an idol to someone this early in the game and obviously Brady isn't using the idol anytime soon so I feel like right when he's gonna need the idol Mm -hmm. um that's when things will be really interesting with the dynamics right and I I think it's a show of trust in Ben and like kind of solidifies their lines for now but since Ben is so cutthroat, I definitely could see him just, like, turning on Brady if he needed to. So, mm-hmm. uh, it'll be interesting to see how that goes down in the future. Um, so, next on my list, this this is where it gets complicated, because I didn't really know exactly how I wanted to rank these tribes, because I'm pretty sure a tribe swap is coming up very, very soon, and I feel like with a tribe swap, people's positions can change so, so much. Um, so I was trying to kind of keep a tribe swap in mind while ranking these people based off this episode. I don't really think that's how you're supposed to do power rankings, but that's kind of what I did, so (laughs) that's really great. Um, but in terms of this specific tribe, I kind of put Cassie second, although now I'm just, like, questioning that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, personally, I put Dylan just because he seems to have a really good social game, and if anyone's keeping it on the radar, it's definitely Dylan, but I think that Dylan is sort of, 
he has his number one in Sarah, but he's also starting to branch over to Brady and, like, make those little, like, ties to get into that bigger cross-tribe alliance, which was a good move for him. Overall, I think, like, the little party thing that they had, because I think that him talking with that like sitting in on that meeting was after the party it mm-hmm. that's what it looked like to me because yeah. they looked a little drunk but um <laughs> I think that that was a good move on him because he's not necessarily going against Sarah but he is um forming those ties now and even if a tribe swap were to come about I think that he's not necessarily a huge target like he gets along with it seems everyone so mm-hmm. I think he's really set yeah, I think Dylan, honestly, is in a great spot, too, because I think he's very under the radar, um, and I think he has social game that can get him far as long as he kind of, like, starts participating in the game, and I think it's totally fine in the beginning to be sitting back, so I think he's in a good position. I don't think anybody wants to vote him out. Yeah. Um, I know we were talking about how, um, it almost seems like something is being set up with the way that people are talking about Dylan seeming kind of, like, chill and relaxed, but, like, he could screw you over in the future. He could do something crazy. I almost feel like, feel like that is setting him up for the future, like, a future edit of him doing something wild and really coming into his own in the game. So I hope that's the case because I'm really rooting for Dylan mm-hmm. as a character. I think he's great. Yeah. Um, I think he has a lot of potential. Um. The reason I put, so I put Cassie and Chloe subsequently, like, over Dylan and Sarah, simply because I think that, um, Cassie and Chloe are more involved in this cross-tribe alliance thing, so they have a lot more connections come a tribe swap, and I think that will do them well, especially since Tofidi and Tormenta, like, are so closely aligned, I think... In most scenarios, Chloe and Cassie will be on a majority Tormenta mm-hmm. slash Tafiti tribe come tribe swap, and I still think they'll honor that whole, like, kill off, uh, sacrifice Sabu Sabu. Um, I honestly hope they don't do that, but yeah, that's what it seems like coming into the next episode. Um, I had only put Chloe and Cassie last just because it did... Like, before the whole tribal thing went down, it, I feel like it is becoming more apparent to both Dylan and Brady. Like, they're separate groups that Cassie is playing in the middle a bit mm-hmm. too hard. Like, she isn't aligning fully with either one of them, which I think it just isn't a good move for her because I feel like she's losing a lot of trust. Like, yeah, they all went to rocks for her, but I think that it might... She, I feel like she's lost enough trust in that aspect, just her playing both sides to where that's, like, sort of the end of the line with them, perhaps, whereas Dylan and Brady have more potential mm-hmm. to grow a better alliance. And then Chloe, I put second to last because while she is really close with Brady, it obviously him not telling her about the idol and then making promises to her that he would, mm-hmm. that does say a lot that he chose Ben over Chloe to tell so I agree yeah I think I think Cassie was in a pretty good spot last week um because I think it was still fine for her to come stay in the middle now I'm starting to think like I really think she needs to pick to pick a side quickly or do something because Mm -hmm. like you said I think both sides are becoming aware that Cassie's kind of in between everybody and really like doesn't know what she's doing Luckily, she hasn't had a situation where she had to pick sides yet, so I think she's still okay in that sense. Um, But it's weird how there's, like, two clear, almost teams and divides within Tafiti, and then she's just kind of there. But Um, who knows? Maybe after going to Rocks and, like, sticking together, maybe they will get closer. I think that that would... Yeah. I think going through Rocks definitely bonds you together, for sure. And I think that says something about, like, your tribe and willing to stick together. But I just think Tafiti is more likely to break off and, like, find other alliances come a tribe swap. Yeah. Um, I had Dylan and Sarah lower. I I had Sarah the lowest simply because she, like, told 
other people exactly who she was talking to, and that's just, like, not a good look, because... Oh, yeah, we, didn't she tell Aaron? Was it Aaron? I'm, I, I like honestly have Aaron. no recollection. I feel like Aaron was like, why would you tell me that? Like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you should just not be laying it out that specific mm-hmm. about who you're talking to, so I think that people are on to exact like they just know everything about what she's doing and it doesn't seem like she's really actively playing the game quite yet but I could see her definitely like coming into her own as well and yeah doing something I, awesome. I feel like her and Dylan are very very close although Dylan is sort of branching out away from that yeah. but Dylan does speak like pretty highly of her right and seems he trusts her the most, so I feel like whatever Dylan would do, I feel like he would keep Sarah safe. I agree. I can't see them, like, I can't see there being a cause for them to separate, you know? Mm-hmm. Especially, like, on Sarah's end, I don't think she's gonna, like, ever, like, really betray or leave Dylan. Um, so I think that could be a good duo to watch out for. Yeah. All right, moving on to my new favorite tribe, <laughs> Sabu Sabu. Sabu Sabu is truly the underdogs, and it's just is so confusing as a viewer why there's a whole like slaughter them type yeah. notion going on because they all seem so nice actually. Literally, like there's literally like a Sabu Sabu slaughter from Tapiti and Tormenta, and and it seems it's sort it's sort of started as Ben and Brady. Like, because mm-hmm. they're the ones that started the cross tribe alliance, and then they brought in their subsequent sides, and they're like, oh, I guess no one here is from Sabu Sabu, yeah. might as well just kick them out. Like, right. Yeah, and I know Sam, Jack, and Sarah were talking on um, Keeper Torchlight, the uh, last episode, about how it was almost like three things that put it in motion. It was Richard and the very first uh, challenge, like, going crazy and like trying to mess with other tribes that obviously doesn't put a good look on sabu sabu Mm -hmm. and then emily p um and brady working together or like brady helping tormenta in that challenge and then ben and brady almost being the first people that arrived and like making that alliance together definitely so i think sabu sabu honestly got screwed by the fates and loki richard it's okay richard we love you (laughs) um so they're just like It sucks, but at the same time, I think this attack from both ends is really unifying Sabu Sabu, and I can see them sticking together till the end. Yeah, I I really do, because in my opinion, yeah, Tafiti went to rocks, but it seemed to be to spite them, whereas Sabu Sabu, like, yeah, I think Crouch just got in the heat of the moment Mm -hmm. and, like, made that decision, like, that's fine, but I feel like Savu Savu, they came to the realization, like, they're the, for whatever reason, which I never really, like, thought of, like, an outskirt tribe, Mm -hmm. like, among the three, and I think that they need, they're, like, fully in the realization, like, they gotta stick together if they're gonna make it out. Yeah, and I almost feel like that's why Crouch getting sent home, or Andrew, if you will, um, Hurts even more because he was from Sabu Sabu. Yeah. He was from the underdog tribe already, and now they lost another member who was potentially really good at the game. Yeah. So I just think they're really suffering on all ends, but I almost think Crouch, like, accidentally manifested pulling the rock. Yeah. <laughs> that poor boy, he was... There was a, all that footage of him just thinking mm-hmm. through it. He came up with that plan. I was so confused at first. I was yeah. like, what math is he even talking about? I like, know. this makes no sense. But then, obviously, it made sense um, during the tribal. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's tough. I love the little clip of him trying to, like, put math into it. He was like, we have a blank, blank chance of blah, blah, And I'm like, dude, you need to, like, explain this. And it's a I know, yeah. I was just like... And then he started talking about coins. Yeah. I was like, what coin? It, yeah, I know. I was like, they don't do coin flips. Like, I was so confused. It was precious, though. Yeah. And I, I admire his, like, dedication to try and avoid it. But, yeah, I think he thought about it too much and manifested it for himself. Yeah. So. That, that just goes to show, guys, don't manifest <laughs> bad things. Stay off manifestation <laughs> TikTok, please. Um... Yeah, so, number one on Sabu Sabu, I have Eliza. Yes, of course. She has the idol, and she's also going out of her way to um, ma- try to make cross-tribe alliances. Mm-hmm. She talked with Brady, and I believe Will. Um, 
She may have talked to Ben, honestly, because I feel like Ben talked to everyone. Yeah. I don't remember. There, There's some cross-tribe going on. Yeah. But, um, she's definitely being active in, like, advocating for both her and also her tribe, I've realized. Mm-hmm. Like, she's not purposely going over and being like, I want out of this tribe, like, I don't trust these people, but, right. like, she's advocating for her own tribe, Yeah. So. I think so, too. Um... And she's sticking to her guns, too. Like, I think she knows and has a good grasp of the game. She was saying how Will was trying to get her to, like, share the... I don't know if it... Yeah. I think it was the idol. Yeah. Or, like, tell him if she finds the idol. I'm like, dude, like, you yeah. think she's just gonna tell you that right away? And she was like, absolutely not. So, I think Elisa kind of knows how to play this game thus far. And I think she's doing a really good job. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, next I have Emily B. Yes, Emily B. She's so sweet. Like, she just seems like a nice person. Like, all of Savu Savu seems so nice. But, yeah. um, I think if a tribe swap were to arise, Emily B. I think can carry herself in just, like, her social game. Yeah. I think she's a l- low-key kind of player, but I think it's working really well for her because... Everyone wants to talk to her, but mm-hmm. she's not in the forefront of anything. Like, I don't think she stands out to everyone, and that can actually be really good most of the time in the beginning. So, yeah, exactly. I can see her being definitely a low-key player. Um, I know last time I had Austin at the lowest, but it's weird because sometimes when people are clearly kind of at the bottom of your tribe, people make sure to reach out to that person because they think no one else will. But I think everyone was doing that with Austin. Yeah. Because I know... Crouch before he left was um, reaching out to Austin and had a good connection with him. I know Lisa was talking to Austin. I'm sure Emily and Austin were talking too. So I think he actually has a lot of connections. Yeah, definitely. Austin, and he's just so passionate about the game. Yeah. He's so wanting to make friends. Like, mm-hmm. he's here, like, for the right reasons, yeah. I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's... And, like, like I said, everyone willing to go to rocks for him. Even, like, Crouch at the end was like, yeah, I just, I didn't have the heart to, like, not do mm-hmm. it for that guy. Like, oh, uh, like, every, <laughs> Austin just seems really wholesome at this mm-hmm. point, And, like, I'm really proud of him for, like, jumping sort of the ranks within his own tribe. Yeah, definitely. I think... He has a lot of allies in his Sabu Sabu tribe. I almost feel like he got lucky to be placed there, because I think if he were in Tafiti or Tormenta, they, like, would have, like, yeah. got him out immediately, just because they seem, I don't know, more cutthroat, I don't know, mm-hmm. but I think he truly believes in, like, his tribe being a family, Yeah. Um, and I think that's just adorable, I love yeah. that. <laughs> um, and then lastly, I we both have Devin. Mm-hmm. Devin, um... We don't see a lot of Devin, but from what everyone is saying about him, they're just a little sus of him. I don't really understand why. Probably because he's Ross Major. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Probably. That bias carries far, but, um, yeah, it just seems like while Savu Savu is really tight, and I wouldn't say he's necessarily on the outskirts of Savu Savu, it seems to me he's not really making closer connections within their tribe. He's not really making cross-tribe alliances. So, I just think that he needs to, like, step up his social game in order to make it far, especially if there is a tribe swap. I agree. I think, from what I saw, it seemed like Andrew and Devin, or at least Andrew was, it's weird saying Andrew. It's weird that, oh, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> Andrew was Devin's closest, like, number one. Even he said that he was, like, anybody but Andrew, like, would have been fine, but Andrew left. So I think Devin doesn't have a number one anymore, and mm-hmm. I think he's just kind of, like, floating there. Um, so It'll be interesting. I think Devin does understand the game, though, so I feel like he will recoup from this, mm-hmm. but, like, just immediately after, tr- after the tribe, yeah, he's definitely sort of at the lowest point. Yeah. I agree. All right. And then we have Tormenta. Yay. Good old Tormenta. Let's be real here. Obviously, Ben is at the top. Yeah. (laughs) Ben is literally the mastermind at this point. He's, like, it's so weird because 
in my head like a mastermind everyone's got to be like careful of that you know just mm-hmm. talking to everyone but everyone just like loves him yeah. like he's doing all of this um and he's got a number one in Brady it seems mm-hmm. he's got a number one with Will like he's just all over the place but yet he's got this unified front going on in case there is a tribe swap mm-hmm. And he's also just, like, not a target. So, there's that. Yeah, it's crazy how he can talk to this many people and people aren't sus. Because normally if someone's talking to that many people, they're like, get get them out. Like, they're talking to everyone. They have too many connections. We can think of some specific people who are like that. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) You know who you are. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, so uh, it's really remarkable that he's able to just, like, not be a threat at all to anybody right now and the fact that um he was able to make Brady feel so close to him to share the fact that he had an idol like I'm sure it's pretty mutual right now but still like that's incredible yeah having someone be that confident in you this early on is crazy so lots of props to Ben for like having that really close alliance with Brady Mm -hmm. um yeah Ben's killing it good job Ben (laughs) um (laughs) Next on my list, I have Will, um, and that's because I feel like he's doing the same things as Ben, like, he has a lot of cross-tribal, um, alliances and whatnot, but he, like, isn't doing it as well as Ben. Yeah, that's my only gripe with Will. He's definitely got all the connections and stuff, but everyone just seems, like, sus of him for whatever reason, even though, yeah, he's doing it exactly what Ben is doing, Mm -hmm. sort of trailing along him as well, but everyone is sort of like, ooh, Will's the mastermind, like, right, it's, it's funny to me, because, uh, you know, you get all these clips of Ben, Ben saying he's, like, 10 billion steps ahead of everyone, but he literally was, like, steps ahead of Will when Ben was the one who already did this cross tribe alliance, but Will being the one to suggest it is actually amazing for Ben, because yeah. Ben gets to keep his alliance And it's almost less sus because it was someone else, it was Will, who apparently decided to create it. Mm -hmm. So Ben gets to have all these connections, have it almost be way more out in the open, and then Will is getting all the flack for it. Yeah, and I just, Will is a really strong player, but I feel like, yeah, if people are going after a strong player, it's going to be Will, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. And I that, think he just comes off. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, his vibes are just... You can tell he's really smart and that he's planning things. Yeah, exactly. Um, Second for me, because I had Will third, mm-hmm. second for me was Emily P. Mm-hmm. Um, just because she is in the three with Ben, Emily, and Will. She's also got the cross tribe to an extent like she's got those ties but I think she's keeping just like a better profile or low profile and she's got Aaron trusting her for whatever reason Mm -hmm. along with that Emily if there is a, a tribe swap going on Emily in my opinion while she to me she comes across as not having like the best social game like she seems just like a super strong player like when you Mm -hmm. first look at her but I think her moves are going to carry her far like I think that she's got stuff brewing so yeah I think so too I had her third um obviously there's the Ben Emily Will like core lines here going on in their tribe so I think she's doing really well in that sense and I, I I agree I think she'll be able to pull something no matter what position she gets put in yeah um because she was even, like, right off the bat, she was the one to go to Brady and ask for help. Like, so she knows, like, while that was a really, really bold move, yeah. like, it worked out in her favor. So I think she knows, like, what she's doing. So. Yeah, definitely. And then in fourth, I have Jessie. Yes, I also have Jessie. Jessie is kind of confusing me <laughs> with, like, how she's playing. I think that she was actually in a really good spot, like, mm-hmm. the first two weeks. Um, while it wasn't ideal and she did realize, like, yeah, she's at the bottom and stuff like that, I think just her second week, you know, voting Nick, and then the whole week of, like, week three, luckily mm-hmm. they didn't go to tribal, but just the whole talk of, like, 
she didn't vote with the group, I think that that's a pretty bad move for her. Yeah, I agree. And then she's, like, lying about it, even though Aaron knows that it was yeah. Jesse. I don't think that's a good look for Jesse at all. Um, I'm almost slightly frustrated with Jesse because you can see she, like, has a knack for Survivor in terms of perception. Like, she was able to call, um, who was it? Like, Will and Ben out, really, yeah. for, like, she knows that they're just using her and adding her as the fourth member of their alliance, and her perception, I think, is just really good, but I don't think she's really using that to her advantage. Um, honestly, I don't think she really could do anything in her tribe to change it up, really, um, just based on the way her tribe is set up, so I think it's fine she's laying low, but it doesn't sound like she's making plans to do yeah. anything in the future. She's not saying, like, oh, I can't wait till a tribe swap so I can switch something up. She's just kind of, like, sitting there. She seems almost kind of, like, mad. Like, she's like, oh, they don't want me, so I guess I'll just, like, not do anything. Like, right. I'll just, like, sit here. And it's, yeah, it's frustrating because she has so much potential. I know, so I'm really hoping that there's a tribe top where she can come into her own, because, oh, I just think she could be such a great player, Mm -hmm. so, and then lastly, poor Erin, (laughs) Erin, it's, it's so sad, like, I think that, in my opinion, Erin just doesn't have a good read on the game she thinks emily's her number one like so she's feeding emily info Mm -hmm. but i she did have perception with like being confused why sarah was telling her info so i'm just not really sure where aaron could go at this point yeah um perhaps like a little tribe swap would mix it up but yeah, I don't see her faring too well in Tormenta. Tormenta, in my opinion, actually, Tormenta, like, seems to be, as an overall tribe, be playing, like, the worst game. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not really working together. There's too much tension in the tribe, like, especially now that Jesse's on the outs. So it's just, like, really confusing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Seems, like, not too pleasant of a tribe, not (laughs) gonna lie, guys. (laughs) I know. I think ugh, it just sucks for Erin because I think she has the potential of, pl- like, playing really well. Yeah. It's just, I think she got screwed from the beginning because people randomly decided to, they like, labeled, on her. They labeled her, like, right away. Yeah, and I think they ran with it just because it's convenient to have a scapegoat like that. So, honestly, she is on, she's obviously the lowest in her tribe. Like, she will be voted out 95% percent of the time unless she's able to like prove that jesse isn't like with the group Mm -hmm. i don't know but yeah i just don't i can't really see her surviving another tribal like i for sure thought she was going to be gone Mm -hmm. for a while of the other episodes so yeah (laughs) Yeah, i'm so excited to see i really hope there's a tribe swap i want to see some like switcheroonies here and like Mm -hmm. people doing some crazy stuff so Definitely. Alas. All right. Well, that concludes our <laughs> our intern insights for Yay. the day. Um, stay tuned. Yes. That's all. All right.